Hello and welcome everybody, my name is Josh the RV Nerd, welcome to Bish's RV and best wishes from Bish's as I've enjoyed saying lately here. Uh, behind us the 24 RBS J Flight and I think this is an absolutely fantastic model. If you're solo or potentially couples camping, um, I think it can be a really good fit for a lot of half tons. Uh, with a 5,500 pound base dry weight, a GVW that doesn't get too out of control. It's not too awful long. Interestingly, this is, I th well, this is the smallest of the full J flights with the extra fancy equipment package, basically. Like the true queen bed, a, uh, a heavier insulation package available, some things like that. It's all of the big, flashy, fun J flight things in the smallest package possible. And I don't know what it is. I'm always really attracted to something like that, that. Like, give me the 10 pounds of sugar in the five pound sack. And that's what this one is right here. It's got a laundry list of excellent qualities. Like it's totally carpetless, taller ceiling, central air to keep you cool through the whole darn thing. Um, with their uh, weather package, you're getting some extra radiant barrier material to um, make that uh, even more effective. By the way, it is like hard to say radiant barrier material really fast because there's a lot of R's in there. Um, this is an excellent traveling model, not just because of the weight, not just because of the size, but the road mode travel accessibility in this one is fantastic. Um, you can get all the way through the camper without ever bumping the slide. You're just, the only time you're gonna need the slide is when you wanna use the dinette or watch TV, which uh, when you get to your campsite is probably going to be fairly often. Now it's not without a couple little hiccups. I'm gonna point those out as we go, but overall, I think she's a pretty sharp find right here. And this is actually one of the single most popular J flights uh, in production out there. I, I think again, because it, it, it gives you that best bang for your buck with like all the big fun features in a smaller, lighter, and as a result, less expensive package. Uh, so one of the things they've done for the 22 season though, where I think that they've really leapt ahead of the crowd overall, is they've gotten rid of all the carpet and all their slides at all of Jayco. Um, at least I can't think of one offhand in the towable division, that is. Their motorized still, uh, interestingly, does some uh, carpeted slide outs, which uh, I don't know. It uh, doesn't matter. That's not what this is about. Sorry. Anyway, um, their window treatments. Uh, they uh, are using a, uh, a heavier black uh, pleated shade to blot the sun out. Notice how they really frame those windows up. That gives those pleated shade anchors something a little bit better to bite into. And it's really been my experience. It's not to say that, that you know, they can't fail. Just that we don't seem to have that recurring trend of like the uh, depleted shades constantly falling down in J flights like you might have seen in the past. Now, J flights do use uh, a full J flight, not an SLX. Does still use floor ducted heating so that you eliminate those cold spots in the RV. And this is centralized air to keep it more evenly cool. For the most part, it is a one room cabin. It's a smaller uh, layout, but you do still have that very private bathroom and you do pretty much have a private bedroom up front. Uh, that, uh, you know, you're going to want to make sure you have some good airflow rolling into there. Um, notice how all the windows open for airflow. That'll be true whether it's in the kitchen or anywhere like that. And uh, their, their table's totally free floating. So if you want to take that outside, if you want to put that in front of the sofa, uh, like, uh, actually, hold on. Let me, uh, let me paint you a little bit of a, a, a picture here. These are those extra little weird things I like doing. So, um, as you see, it's all set and ready for a television. Um, we used to include a lot of TVs in these things, and then more and more people wanted to do things like add smart TVs to a camper. Well, it doesn't make sense to buy an optional TV just to replace it with something else. But with this table right here, you know, if uh, it is just one or two of you, maybe you just want to sit straight across from the TV and have your dinner or something like that. And as you see, it still leaves enough room for you to like get up and, and maneuver around the uh, the camper, as it were. Um, now, let, let's, as long as we're sitting here, I was going to get up, but let's go ahead and focus because this is comfortable. And we'll look up at the ceiling um, where we've got the skylight up top here, letting in that extra natural light, but it does have a privacy shade. And I'll pull all these shades down for you in a few minutes here. Um, the uh, air conditioners, I mentioned, well, air conditioner, this is uh, a 30 amp floor plan. I don't believe this is 50 amp capable. I'm not sure it's big enough. Um, the uh, All the ducting, though, is vented and louvered. What that means is that you can turn and close every one of those vents, kind of like um, the dashboard of your car, so that you can get that air pumping exactly where you want it. Now, pardon me if I don't get this out of the way where I'm not used to it being, I'm going to trip over this and go ace-deuce, uh, guaranteed. All right, so getting that out of the way here. Um, you notice how they're using 
more lights. Like they're using double row lighting, even in a smaller trailer like this. Maybe it's a little bit overkill. Thankfully, you can still individually click and turn off uh, each one of those lights. Over here, we're looking at the 12 volt DC compressor fridge, which gives us a, uh, a larger overall um, cold storage capacity. It is totally travel safe and uh, it actually cools much faster. So if you're camping in a hot climate, it's a great thing to have. Now, that's not the only fridge that they offer. You can still get a uh, gas electric two-way eight cubic foot in this if you're looking to do some boondocking or off-gridding or something like that because the propane side is still going to be far more energy efficient when it comes to your battery reserves. Um, the uh, countertops in the uh, kitchen area over here are a sealed edge press membrane. And again, one of the things I like to do is I like to be fair. Like I, I was, uh, I also like to give you looks from your point of view. Like when you were sitting at the dinette a second ago, now we're sitting at the sofa. What are we seeing here? We're seeing a couple things. We're seeing a, a limit of door side window coverage. And we're seeing the fact that this has limited countertop space. That is one of the things with this being a smaller camper, there's just not as much room for countertop area. So this is going to be an RV that I think, if you're a big time campsite cook, you're probably not going to enjoy this RV. If you like to cook outside though, that's what this one kind of depends on. Now we are also looking at the modern farmhouse decor in here, but there's also the uh, cottage decor. So if you're looking for something that is just, uh, you know, a little bit more in the, the world of brown tones, kind of like we're looking at here, if you're not into that light white and bright color package, well, you don't have to deal with that. Um, one of the other cool things about this one with that big u dinette, it opens up into a, uh, a very nice sleeping space. That could be a big adult sleeper, not to mention you've got the sleeper sofa. And then if we start cracking open uh, all the storage over here, you, uh, if you look under the sofa, you may have noticed that is the reason why this floor plan is not theater capable. Uh, there is a furnace basically under that sofa and a theater seat uh, doesn't leave room for a furnace, unfortunately. So that's just one of those things that you have to kind of, uh, you know, consider there all the cabinetry in this by the way is pocket screwed um it's not staple cabinetry that's something that you'd find i don't know only maybe 50 percent of the time in the world of travel trailers uh oh by the way the air conditioner you're gonna find even though this isn't dual air uh something you're gonna find dual air on that uh the the thermal package and the larger 15,000 btu air unit on this typically more than enough to take care of the job this thing has though a surprisingly good bathroom back there. But as you can see, there's no TV when you sit down to pee. Thankfully, I don't think toilet TV certification is a make or break must have for most individuals. Now, the bathroom will always be farmhouse, by the way, which I don't mind because it's the smallest room in the RV and it helps everything look and feel nice and big. There's some excellent space, uh, good leg room around this one. And since that's a shower curtain, not a, uh, a shower door, it, uh, you know, gives you plenty of elbow room over here. And once again, that taller ceiling means extra headroom for the uh, the big clumsy oxes like me. They have a habit of bonking their head on everything. I've really, uh, in the summertime, adopted wearing a hat most of the time. Not to, like, keep the sun out of my eyes or anything like that. But frankly, just to give myself, like, some level of early warning system so I'm not knocking my noggin on everything. Now down below here, uh, extra, I, I think that'd be a perfect little place for your toilet paper and whatnot, right next to the, uh, the, the toilet. Although there, wait a minute, what? Okay. So they do go ahead and mount the toilet paper roll. I never really processed this before. That is, I've got a long reach. That is pretty far from the toilet. I might personally want to move that. I'm not sure what I would do with it. Maybe I'd just go with a toilet paper stand or something. Uh, good corner medicine cabinet, but notice uh, there's a whole additional closet back here. That's one of the other really cool things about this. When we go up to the bedroom, the two hanging towers, we'll say, one of them is a closet. The other is just dresser space. So at, at a glance, if you're looking in just the bedroom, you might feel like you've been shorted on some hanging storage. But remember back here in the bathroom, you've actually got like a gigantic closet that, uh, frankly, most bigger trailers don't have anything that can match that. Um, now, I, I realize we spent a ton of time like looking at the dinette and everything earlier. Uh, you did notice also, I mentioned this previously, it's not a, 
I'm not gonna call this a full private bedroom. That might be a deal breaker for some people. At the same time, I think the, some of the logic here is it's primarily a solo or couples camper. I don't think we need a, a full privacy door. That being said, I think there's a lot of people who still just feel more comfortable with a full privacy door. Um, check the link in the video description. I've got a very similar layout in mind from Coachman that is almost the same footprint, but we'll have a full wall right there. Interestingly though, it does feel smaller than this one feels right here. So kind of keep that in mind. Now we had a little look right there at the storage. That is a 60 by 80 true queen bed, by the way. And I'm not gonna tell you that the mattress is amazing or anything like that, but at least it makes it easy to swap out. And here's another thing. If you're looking at this, look at the gaps between the mattress and the side closets. J Flight has standardized their fit for a king bed. So if you did uh, choose to go to a different mattress or a bigger bed, you don't have to modify this RV, which I think is really cool. It's really smart. Um, also, the lights above the bed right there, like you can reach from bed, but the lights in the ceiling over here, a little bit taller, a little bit harder to reach. Now, you're looking at this light blinking like crazy and you're going, uh-oh, what's wrong with it? This RV is equipped with the optional uh, solar package. It does not have a battery on it though. So as a result, the panel's going, uh, I don't have any battery to charge with the solar panel right now. That's the only reason it's blinking at us. Now flipping around here on that privacy partition, cause it's obviously not a full wall. You do have your TV uh, like key block mount by the way. And obviously we're taking a look at it in road mode with the slide closed over here. Um, I, I would say we could we, we should play a drinking game where you drink every time I say road mode. Although if you watch enough of my videos, that might actually put you in the hospital needing stomach pumped. What you're seeing here is this is very traveling friendly for uh, pit stops or overnight stayovers. Notice too how I folded that table down. That's a little pro tip for you from your Uncle Josh. You want to make sure that that you know freestanding floating table is uh, down and secured in transit like that. Otherwise, it's gonna jiggle bang all over the place. It's gonna end up falling straight into the face of your oven and dinging and banging something up terrible. So just like you saw here, whether it's the bed, the kitchen, or the uh, the bathroom here, you are perfectly what I I'm gonna call Cracker Barrel capable. And I, I don't know how better to describe it other than. The full flights here, they got away from like all the Nike Adidas swooshes. They've got a really like crispy look to them. They're very clean lines, very linear, very defined. And for what can commonly feel like such a classic camper, this has so much more of an upscale feel. I think J Flight and Transcend by Grand Design, those two brands in the stick and tin world, I think do one of the best jobs of looking and feeling very modern. Although I don't know that Cherokee and Gray Wolf do a terrible job, but look at this huge pass-through compartment on this thing with separated storage inside and outside. And just to really illustrate the point that is a full true pass-through with equally sized baggage doors on both sides, I thought I'd do my David Blaine teleport maneuver to hop to the other area there. Now notice the windows are all tinted and again, admittedly, this floor plan does suffer from a lack of windows on the door side of the RV. Again, I hope you appreciate the, the, the candid way that we point these things out to you because when you're just looking at these videos, if you've never owned an RV, there's things like that that maybe you didn't think about. You might not know what you might not know, you know? <laughs> <laughs> or or not, as it were. Um, a uh, interesting thing on the full flights here, we're getting 30 pound propane tanks and frankly, even a lot of far more expensive laminated trailers are not giving us those bigger tanks. Now 20 pound tanks are easier to exchange on a Sunday. You know, you can go to a gas station if you want, but 30 pound tanks give you more time between refills. So you probably don't have to worry about that. Power tongue jack up front doing the heavy lifting for us. I believe there's power jack options available on these on the corners. Again, each of our locations may stock and build these differently. So always keep that in mind. Um, a very cool thing, all Jayco travel trailers and fifth wheels. They are set and prepped for not just like a rear view camera, but also side cameras, observation cameras. And every one of these has tow safety lighting. So uh, this signal right here, this marker light will blink with your turn signal. That's not normal. That's not normal in the world of RVs. Most RVs don't do that. Now notice over here, you've got the all nice uh, protected baggage doors as well with that sealed piano hinge on there and the uh, the magnet holdbacks. Now, as we uh, back up a little bit, 
Uh, the speakers are up high. I'm uh, very vocal about the fact that I personally greatly dislike that in RVs, especially a stick and tin trailer like this where they can very easily hide wires and walls down lower. I wish they'd have done something like that here. That is an anti-slam door so the wind doesn't bang it against the side of the trailer. The uh, stable steps on here giving us, uh, it takes a lot of that herky-jerky wiggle jiggle out of the camper as you're coming and going. Ooh, I am walking on uh, literal ice over here, thin ice. <laughs> kind of like, <laughs> it's kind of like when I, uh, I, st <laughs> I try to disagree with my wife. I'm literally walking on thin ice. <laughs> now for peace of mind, uh, getting away from the thin ice discussion, you do uh, have right there um, Goodyear Endurance Radials, which um, it's kind of funny. There's a lot of stick and tin trailers or even a lot of different RVs and fifth wheels that have suddenly started using um, Goodyear Radials, but they did it only because their import tires were not available due to container ship and, and logistics tie-ups, basically. But Jayco's been using Goodyear's because they want to make sure that like the turn signal safety lighting, like the full observation camera suite, that you have um, you know, more safety, more peace of mind when towing because I think they get that mindset from their motorized division, how getting there can be just as important as being there, you know? But when you are there, <laughs> this is a handy little thing to have. I'm not gonna call it a camp kitchen. It's just a, fr I'm gonna call it a little convenience station. It is very cool that you do have that extra drawer, the little bit of space in there, dad's medicine cabinet, you know. You've got a bunch of good things. And in case you're curious, right down below, man, it's close. That is still technically, uh, actually, I'm gonna leave it up to you, our viewers. Can you identify, is that a propane cooker hooker or is that the infamous propanus? You leave me a comment and you let me know. Um, on the back here, a couple things. We've got a full outside utility shower, black tank flush. Those are two things that are becoming more common, but you still can't assume everybody does. But the latter, that is something that has become kind of hard to find. And it's actually a really good sign that we're seeing ladders on these full flights um, because it's a good indication that a lot of the um, supply challenges that manufacturers face through the 21 season are being resolved. It's really been a two steps forward, one step back process, but it's like that healing is taking place, which I think is uh, really exciting to see. Um, spare tire's not optional on these, by the way. It kind of boggles my mind how many RV brands have optional spare tires. It's like cough medicine. I hope you never need it, but boy, if you need it, I sure hope you got it. You know, that's why I like they put those spares on there. That's something I'm really glad we tend to option on quite a bit too. Now, one other thing I wanna show you down here is unfortunately something you can't actually see a whole lot, and that is the optional J-Flight thermal package. Um, I've actually long suspected that a full J flight like this could potentially pass zero degree testing. To my knowledge, it's just never actually been tested. So I guess the best I can say is that in the world of stick and tin campers, this is one of the very best you can get for extended season camping. Uh, again, I think a Grand Design Transcend is right up there neck and neck with it at this point. And a couple things for you up here on the roof. One of the main things, there's tons of walkable roofs out there, like everything you see in the background, walkable roof. One of the major differences on this one though is that it has plywood roof decking which gives it a greater load capacity basically so if you live where it's like crazy snow country and you don't want to have to try to worry about getting on top of one of these things and brushing snow off which uh i've been on the tops of a lot of rvs sometimes when it's slippery not a good idea this is something that you can kind of just park it and forget it for the most part you know We've actually had uh, multiple instances where customers have sent us pictures where like, uh, we had a personal customer here where uh, uh, a tree fell on the bunk area of their J flight with their kids in it and the roof structure was strong enough that it held and the kids were able to make it out safe. I hope you never have to experience that, but the fact is this kept them safe. Also, you might notice in the background, we've got that optional 100 watt solar panel. Again, that is not the be all end all of solar. It's a really nice battery tender though, and it's been my experience that the vast majority of what are perceived to be um, electrical problems with RVs actually relate to low 12 volt battery power. Like whether it's awning or slides or lights or anything like that. The, the computer boards in the like water heater, for instance, need 12 volt power. And 
Uh, if you don't have enough coming in, everything starts to go, you know, and it doesn't quite work exactly right. So that little thing right there can save you a lot of headaches, not to mention it can give you a much greater lifespan on the battery on the tongue of that trailer. Even a little solar can always do you a lot of good. Well, now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go figure out where I left my hat because my bald nugget is freezing. Now, this is a, a very similar layout, by the way, to a Coachman Freedom Express 252, which uh, is a model that we have video of on our channel. I'll leave you a link to that in the video description or maybe something else in a similar size and kind of mindset that I can think about. As always, I'll leave you a link in the video description so that you can see where we have one of these parked across the country and what it's going for at that local dealership. That way you can always get the most current pricing local to you. Short of that, what do you think about her? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And when you're ready, remember, we're ready. And until that, next time, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You can always see what's coming out that way. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone.